The other day I had a service call. It was an inspection deficiency service call to replace a bell that had failed. Now this is a classic, uh, classic simplex bell. And if you notice, there's a rivet here and you're probably wondering how can we get this bell off to service it, to find out what's wrong with it. Uh, just um, FYY, um, if you notice on the, in the side here, there's a screw and we can loosen this screw. We go to the other side. There's a screw on that side. We can get in there and loosen that screw. After these two screws are loosened, the bell pulls off and you can see that the screws hold in with this little, hold these little studs in place. Uh, also, oh, this is a nice bell too. Anyway, if you notice under here, there's a hammer, you can see the hammer and there's this little white hole there. This white hole is designed to stick a small screwdriver in it. It's an adjustment screw and it adjusts the height of the hammer. After time, sometimes this gets out of adjustment and it needs to be readjusted. Uh, and that may be the case of this failed bell that uh, the inspector had written up uh, to replace. Um, so what we want to do is we want to just look into this a little bit deeper. Okay, let me get in here. I want to tighten this bell back up. And then we're going to fire this thing off and see what's going on with the bell. Okay. And we get this here and tighten that one up. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, so the, the bell physically works. Has a good sound to it. Good cast iron bell. The new bell that we would replace it with would be a piece of cast aluminum. It sounds like a frying pan. It sounds like total shit. Made out of, and the base is made out of plastic. Um, you know, just like they said, they don't make them like they used to. So anyway, let's go ahead and find out what's going on here. Ah. Yeah, we can see that the, the bell is working. You can hear the hammer going off, but I think what we need to do is just turn the screw here and just kind of tune this thing in and give it a little adjustment. So here we go. Works like a champ. Works like a champ. No need to replace this bell. Just tune it right in. So next time, next time someone uh, or you get a failed bell in your inspection report, uh, ask them if they adjusted the bell or if they just uh, want to sell you a new one. Um, chances are all you have to do is turn a screw and you're good to go. Have a good day. Interesting enough, the way a vibrating bell works is you have a coil, and when the coil is energized, it will pull the hammer down. And when it pulls the hammer down, you'll see back here, there's a set of contacts that it releases. When it releases, it removes the energy from the coil and the coil springs back up. 
with this little spring here and the contacts make contact again which energizes the cool which then pulls that down and releases the uh, contacts which de-energize the cool and this is a repeated process that this goes through uh, therefore it gets the bell to vibrate let's do a little demonstration here let's uh, connect the power source to our bell here and you'll be able to see that little thing take action all right here we go let me get the camera on here real good and and you'll see the little arc in this. Pretty interesting. All right. So occasionally these points can get dirty or get pitted and create a dead spot. And you could take a little emery cloth and get in there and clean them, and it works good as new. Okay.